Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning news, especially what's going on in the market and just the overall sentiment of what's going on. First up, whales move over $4 billion in Bitcoin during Sunday's market carnage. And then when I take a look at this, I think to myself, are whales actually necessary? And actually, are they actually good for the cryptocurrency digital asset market. We're gonna take a look at that and just a little bit of a price history, talking about five facts about Bitcoin corrections. And the correction and the downtrend that we saw just yesterday is absolutely nothing compared to what we've seen and what we are going to see. So we'll take a look at those two uh, articles, but first take a look at what's going on into the market. Let me update this. This is uh, Trade the Chain with Sentiment Analysis. I'd like to take a look at what people are feeling and you can see it right here, the sentiment over here, I mean, you got Bitcoin at 56,000, which is actually pretty good if you think about it, because we were down to like 52,000. So, hey, <laughs> not too bad, honestly. Then we have uh, Ethereum at 2200, uh, it's up a little bit. Everything's up a little bit over seven days, just depends. Uh, XRP's up a little bit, Dogecoin's up massively, whatever reason, and uh, everything else. So, it, that's not the that's not the story. The story is. I like to peruse around Twitter just to see what's going on and see what people are saying. And uh, I will say, this is a different dip than what uh, I'm used to as far as the sentiment uh, that is out there. A lot of people, especially people who have been around for a long time, have even talked about getting out right now. And um, it's concerning because every time I see these types of things, I'm like, hmm. What else is going on in the market? What is really happening? Well, when people say this market is different, it sure is. So this bearish sentiment, especially with Bitcoin, is really not surprising, especially what's going on. So I want to just take a trip down memory lane a little bit, a bit and just take a look at what was happening over the weekend, uh, what is happening right now, and what I believe is going to happen uh, pretty much uh, coming up uh, very soon. So I just want to start off with this. This is a, uh, a quote, it's from Nathan Rothschild, one of the Rothschilds, uh, very famous investors. And he said like this, he goes, uh, I never invest at the bottom and I I've always sell too soon. I never invest at the bottom and I always sell too soon. This is the most prominent investor out there. So you have to understand that uh, when people are talking about, you know what, I'm gonna time the market, I'm gonna you know, do it really well, they're not gonna do it like, real well. But the real question is, when do you have to get out? When do you want to get out? So let's just real quick. Um, we went over this in detail uh, on Sunday. It was uh, me and actually Alex Masculi uh, joined me. And we talked about the different things that were going on in uh, behind the scenes. And a lot of these things you've already, you already heard about. There was massive liquidations of $10 billion. There was a lot of different actions as far as different wallets being moved around with uh, Bitcoin. There was a power outage in China, which uh, led to a uh, drastic reduction in uh, the hash rate. And then of course, there was a big rumor flying around that the, uh, it wasn't the Department of Justice, it was like um, the, the, I think it was the Commodities Commission was going to like uh, bring forth some charges because people were uh, money laundering, which sounded really weird. Uh, and actually one of the lawyers, uh, Travinsky came out and said, they don't do that. That's the Department of Justice job. So that doesn't make any sense. Uh, as far as like money laundering with cryptocurrency. So it's just a lot of things that were going on. And it always makes me think like, what's the agenda behind the agenda really is what's going on. So first of all, let's just take a look real quick. Whales, whales, everybody's uh, least favorite subjects. I mean, we always like to talk about them and uh, just discuss them. Oh, and, and then real quick, just so you know, uh, the uh, our background is a little bit different today. They're still working on the uh, pool room. Hopefully by tomorrow it'll be done, but uh, we'll see. We had a reprieve on the weekend, but here we are. Anyhow, so we're talking about Bitcoin right here. And it talks about how Bitcoin hit an all-time high at almost 65,000, 64,895 per unit on April 14th. And we've got April 19th, 3 p.m. Uh, Paso, Texas time. And so April 14th, that was the all-time high of all-time highs. On Sunday, this Sunday, it dropped to a low of 51,541. 65,000 to pretty much 51,000 in a blink of an eye. That is, uh, that's amazing, right? That's like, that's like a huge drop. Well, in the like I've always said, in, in the traditional space, that is like jump out of the window type of thing. Uh, you know, it's just an awful day for the stock market. It'll never rebound. But in crypto, 
that's not that big of a deal. I'm going to show you how much of not of a big of a deal uh, going forward. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. and it, it talks about you know why why this could have happened. It talks about the uh, re uh, reduction hash rate because of the power outage in China, different places. And it sort of talks about how they, they use on-chain analysis to take a look at all the movement for uh, Bitcoin. And there was a there was a movement of plus fifty eight thousand coins that were went from one wall to another wall. They said this is probably a new uh, cold Binance wall because they were tracking these things on Binance. But then there was plus twenty thousand and plus eleven thousand. Now who's to say that's not Binance or that's you know who it is? But when I take a look at this stuff. And everybody starts to surmise about what it is. Well, it's these whales. They're doing all these things. And I'm really concerned about what's going on because these whales and these whales and these whales. I'm like, I just don't care. I, I just, if whales are going to move things around, I, and I, I, I know what people say, Rod, you got to care because these whales are going to start selling and, and the market is going to start dumping and da-da-da, it's going to be awful. I'm like, really? Great. Go ahead. Do all the selling that you want and let everybody else get out. I don't care that that's going to happen. Uh, I've already got my positions. I have an exit strategy. I'm sitting pretty nice right now. And even if it drops a little bit, do you honestly think after what has happened this year with the institutions that are getting in, and these aren't just like institutions, like these little mom and pop places. I mean, we know all the different places, like, I mean, old places like uh, Mass Mutual, one of the oldest in insurance companies. We have PNY Mellon Bank, one of the oldest banks in the United States. We've got Tesla, we've got the micro strategies, we've got NYDIG bringing all these different players into the, into the whole market and all these institutions who know all these things and all these different tricks in the traditional markets, do you not think that they are not trying to do these types of things to maybe move things around and pull that train back to really get paid? Not saying that's what it is, uh, financial advice, but sometimes it just makes me wonder what's the agenda behind the agenda. Now, I will say it, I will take it one step further. Maybe this is it. Maybe we reached the all time top of 64,000 and the bull runs over and we're just going to be stagnant for the next couple of years. And all these different players that got into it uh, and all the different institutions and hedge fund managers and pension. It just sounds ridiculous when I say it. And, uh, and, and insurance companies are like, you know what? That's, that's fine. We'll, we're okay with that. And uh, that's it. We're not going to buy anymore. Okay. All right. Maybe that, that, that could be it. I mean, it could be. And then to finish up, uh, eight and a half million Bitcoin from 2010 spent after sitting idle for over 10 years. And uh, I just want to throw this in because 150 Bitcoin from 2010 was transferred after the price of Bitcoin slid a, slid a few hours away, and all 150 Bitcoin worth eight and a half million today were mined on the uh, 2010, and it was my, mostly uh, mined by the same entity. So it says it talks about moving it. I don't know if it was sold. It just said it was moved. So I will just say this: if somebody somehow uh, was able to hold on to Bitcoin since 2010, uh, God bless you. Good for you. That's pretty amazing. And if you want to sell right now, you should be selling because that's uh, pretty pretty big. I mean. Eight and a half million. Who wouldn't? Who would do that right now? And I know some people will say, "But you can wait because it's going to go to 150 or 300 or 500 thousand." And I will just remind you, that person's goals are not your goals. My goals are not your goals, and your goals aren't everybody else's that is watching the uh, this video today. So just remember that whatever your goals are, just hit those goals, hit the exit strategies, and go. You know what? I want to get out with ten thousand dollars. Well, great. Set it up like that. Or I want to get out with ten billion dollars well great well first of all call me because that'd be awesome <laughs> you did that and uh, that's about it so this is just the, the first piece i want to take it down 